Stop waiting for Bitcoin to become a million. Stop thinking in fiat terms. You need to learn how to build on Bitcoin. Altcoins are building wooden shacks. They can build it fast, but it's going to fly away with the first high wind. None of us know what Bitcoin is. Just because it was meant to be money, that doesn't mean it's only that. Detoxicate yourself from the proof of stake thinking and start thinking, what can I give? Build on Bitcoin because those experiences will be impossible on the fiat infrastructure and that's how how we transition into this new life. Nostar is a big opportunity, especially for content creators. Do you think that the whole internet and all the communications will be at some point be on a Nostra? Nostar will be the new internet. The internet that has native money. Nobody can stop you from joining Nostar. Nobody can stop you from building on Bitcoin. Actually, none of us know what Bitcoin is. None of us. Uh, just because it was meant to be money, uh, that doesn't mean it's only that. It's just like saying a human is a mammal or a human is somebody that walks on two legs. It's just so much more complex thing, just like Bitcoin. And you can say it's a heating system. You can say it's an electrical system. You can say it's money. You can say it's store of value. You can say it's cyber security. All those are true and it is in one thing. But if you are stuck in one uh, description, you're going to miss all the others. And just like you, if you bring those new voices, they can put in that new point of view of this new reality and that keeps it fresh because kind of regurgitating what uh, the big voices say in a different matter is not enough at this point because Bitcoin is outgrowing the moneyness even at this stage. Uh, I'm talking about the people that really understand it. Obviously, people don't even consider it as money yet, the majority, but uh, the people that build, uh, I love how the mining industry is now trying to research what is more valuable, the electricity providing to the people or the money that we are going to get in a form of Bitcoin. And that dynamic, I, I love it. Uh, and if you say, oh, Bitcoin is just money and you um, and you apply a store of value type of, oh, I'm going to buy this and nothing else, you're going to miss on the living part. Like you use it as money as a medium of exchange in all of those properties. But if you don't focus on your personal um, life, what do you actually want to accomplish with Bitcoin? And that's why I really love the podcast and those new guests because they bring their personal stories, even if they don't think on a global level. Uh, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate that a lot. And I mean, that's the uh, perfect segue actually in our topic. Like, so let's just write, start right <laughs> into it. Um, why, like, first of all, like, uh, why do you think that we uh, need to build on Bitcoin more than just money? Like, why is Bitcoin more than just, I mean, just money? Like, money itself is an amazing use case. And <laughs> if yeah. Bitcoin would be just the, just the money of the earth, it would be gigantic but why is it more than that uh i would say yeah the the real value i really love uh alex glastin that the uh, use case of money that bitcoin gives the value that we never had is that it's money that nobody can control nobody can capture even if they try, they are going to get wrecked. It's going to be something temporarily. And because for the first time ever, there, there is not going to be a 1% in Bitcoin. Yeah, people will take advantage. People will provide value. But the majority will win at any centralization point. Because now the majority uh, has the power of one person, one vote, one node, one vote. And that supersedes everything else. Uh, right now, everything is getting captured, obviously because of the money, but it's this disbalance because the 1% has so much more power than the 95 or the 99% because that 1% uh, has that enormous power, the majority does not have the same power. And in the Bitcoin is a reverse. 
that that value that the majority will outpower, outcompete the minority if the minority is not um, uh, valuable for the whole society. Obviously, if somebody provides enormous value to all of society, we don't mind it. But if somebody abuses that power, now for the first time, majority can fight back against it. Now we can't fight back because we just don't have the power. We are, all of us are getting captured. And because now we have that power, we just need to realize how to use it. And that's why I say that you need to learn how to build on Bitcoin. Because if you just, um, I say that previously that um, we are so used to this proof of stake thinking in the fiat system, uh, in the whole stack. Well, the central bank wants to print money and give you something for nothing. Uh, the technology companies get captured and with their stocks want to give you something for nothing. And uh, through the whole stack, for the person that is an employee, wants to receive their salary monthly and doesn't want to do any work, which is, again, fiat. Uh, proof of stake, like the time is going to pass anyway, so I don't want to do any work. And if you actually build on Bitcoin, that is a completely reverse. People that actually build on Bitcoin and not just use it as proof of stake, oh, I have one Bitcoin, so I'm set for the rest of my life, just continue pro to provide value. And uh, the really beautiful thing that I love in Bitcoin is that now for the first time ever, you can chase the life that you want to have and not uh, uh, pray, beg, ask anybody for it. It's your personal choice if you're going to do it. If you just stack sats and don't build on Bitcoin, yeah, you have something, but you always say, oh, I should have bought more, or oh, now I should have sold because the price is this or that. And it, this is just uh, detoxicate yourself from the uh, proof of stake thinking and start thinking, what can I give and what am I chasing? What do I want to do? And just use Bitcoin as uh, the best vehicle to achieve it. I also love the, the saying that uh, don't ask what Bitcoin can do for you, but ask what you can do for Bitcoin. And this includes yeah. for me, like doing something for the ecosystem. And obviously there are so many different parts, what you can do. Like I just try to do my podcast and try to bring out uh, so many new voices and also bring out uh, all, the, all the great voices that we already have heard. Um, but you can also build actually on Bitcoin, which is really exciting. Um, and then there's this topic for me that's really interesting uh, with altcoins. There are like so many altcoins out there and they all, when I meet someone that has an altcoin or that promotes an altcoin, it always goes something like this. Oh yeah, I have this one altcoin, which is superior to Bitcoin because of that one feature. Uh, and this is always like, yeah, but you don't have the other 72 things that you actually need to have something solid here. Um, do, the first question is, do we need to build those use cases uh, that altcoins have onto Bitcoin? Uh, and if there are use cases from altcoins that you see uh, that would be valuable on Bitcoin, will they all be built on Bitcoin? And then like maybe a third question is in there. Um, do you then see all altcoins eventually going to zero when uh, Bitcoin can build everything uh, uh, on there? Uh, I, I don't know in the very long future when we go to the Bitcoin standard, because I think a lot of numbers that are uh, currently used are going to uh, get captured by Bitcoin. Uh, so they are going to get in this open ecosystem. For example, currently, uh, there are loyalty programs. Yeah, let's say in uh, stores, in air miles, in uh, uh, coffee shops, everywhere. Because they can't print uh, uh, currency digits, they print loyalty digits. <laughs> it's the same type of game like the, the thing, but they are doing the same type of inflation game. And in a big way, the loyalty programs are like CBDCs. They tell you, oh, you can't use it in a, a dislocation, you can't use it in a competitor. But what actually stops those same uh, loyalty uh, points to be 
Bitcoin to be millisat. Nothing actually stops them now because Bitcoin kind of gets to that point with whether it's with eCash, whether it's with the Lightning Network, it doesn't matter. Another thing, what stops all the video games that use virtual uh, soft currency and virtual hard currency uh, in their uh, games? Not, nothing actually stops them to connect to the Bitcoin ecosystem and the kid that plays, let's say, uh, I don't know which game, but it has a currency in it to actually earn millisats when it's a kid from six years old and can play a computer game and now can earn money and go buy food and it's a productive member of the whole society and it's in this open network. And all of those network effects will come into Bitcoin and all the, uh, I would say, all the uh, cases right now with altcoins are kind of saying this, let's say, uh, faster transaction is more important than incorruptible money or the privacy aspect is more important than incorruptible money. And that's a flawed thinking. Whether they realize it or not, that's a problem. You, just like uh, if you say, uh, go and build massive biceps and the rest of the body is atrophying. Like you, uh, like you just have to look at the whole system, not just one feature. Yes, that feature may be very important, but is it important uh, for the whole society right now? And because Bitcoin is this foundation that it's incorruptible unless, uh, it's still incorruptible, but the majority can decide if uh, wants to change it. And we can add all of those features to add to it. Obviously, m there might be some features that uh, we can't put on Bitcoin uh, on the blockchain, whether it's on the Lightning Network. We have to abstract some of those features in other layers or in other uh, protocols. I don't know. but uh when we have this infinite time and uh, incorruptibility we just need to build it and because uh altcoins are uh i think it's like uh, this metaphor that they're building wooden shacks like they can build it fast but it's kind of um, going to fly away with the first high wind but uh, bitcoin is this cathedral just like the most famous one, the Sagrada Familia, it's built for um, more than 140 years. Because we have infinite time, we need to have that thinking of building. Because if it is that important, that feature, we will build it. But we come from the point of, yes, this is important, not from I want to sell you something fast so I can win and you can lose. Ah, that's interesting. Um, what, what, what do you say is the most interesting use case to build on, on top of Bitcoin? Uh, I mean, obviously money, but uh, outside of money, uh, what, what do you see as a really interesting use case that we can build on top of Bitcoin? Uh, I, I, I'm not exactly certain, but uh, uh, of one particular use case, because they're all fascinating. But I'm really interested in how... Even me, it's so hard to detach from the fear type of infrastructure and thinking that we currently live in, just like the fish is swimming in the water and uh, maybe they realize that they swim in water, but it's just this thing that they need. And we're currently living in that paradigm of uh, uh, fear thinking in the really in the infrastructure. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you, and that's why I reached out in the podcast, is let's even take one aspect of the content creation. Uh, and let's say currently the fiat thinking, if uh, we want to analyze it. Right now, if you're a podcaster, you know, to have income by it, you may have sponsors or you may have people that pay you through this and you're taxed a lot 
uh, whether it's by Google selling it or by the banking processors, by a lot of things in the fiat stack uh, are stolen from me. But let's analyze and maybe it can turn a bit of a dialogue because you're really in this space. Uh, let's analyze um, a hardware wallet uh, sponsor. Currently, if uh, they sell something through an influencer, they usually give, the, uh, give them uh, a code uh, for a discount. What does that actually mean? That the real price of that uh, product, uh, the hardware wallet, is not actually the full price because they give this uh, codes like candy. And uh, uh, that means that the actual price of the device is not uh, the full price, but is the discounted price. The other thing, because uh, they are discounting this, and on top of that, they are paying the influencers uh, something so they can promote it. Obviously, uh, when it's talked on podcast, they what they do actually want is sales. But if you don't talk about their product, nobody will buy it. But uh, because they're paying additionally, that means that the actual price of the product is even lower if they actually sell it. And on top of that, when you pay the influencers, nobody is going to uh, pay, let's say, somebody that has uh, 10 subscribers to their channel because they don't want to waste money. They want to put their money mar marketing budget to good use so it could lead to sales. Uh, and that kind of creates this centralization mechanism just because of this simple thing that we're talking about, uh, that they are a sponsor of a podcast. And uh, the bigger the podcast becomes, uh, the more money gives you and it kind of feed creates this uh, virtual cycle that it creates more and more centralization. The bigger the podcast, the, uh, the more they are going to focus on that podcast to pay them and drop all the others. So it's kind of creating this cycle of centralization just because of the fiat payment structure of it. But let's think in uh, what we kind of glimpsed in my last episode with you. What if we have a split payment for that? That means that they give you a QR code and you negotiate not a marketing premium of uh, talking about it, but actual commission for sales. And every time that somebody buys a hardware wallet through your personal QR code, not a discounted, but a real value, uh, Called, you get let's say 10% commission split payment, they get 90% or 15 or 20 doesn't matter, but it's a direct commission. They don't need to track any numbers, codes, and stuff like that because the payment that you receive, the 10% payment, is the actual proof that the user bought it through you. So there's no accounting needed for that, and not only that, but the marketing budget for that hardware wallet. What is it? Zero, absolute zero. So anybody that has 10 subscribers to their channel can actually sell a hardware wallet because they don't need to pay them. And if that channel with 10 subscribers, they're the highest quality uh, viewers, it could be 10 sales. The podcaster is happy. The uh, hardware manufacturer is happy it gets increased and that actually creates competition and not centralization. But that's just one point. So let's uh, give it to you if uh, you disagree or something and we'll expand on this point. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. Maybe I can share a lot of insights as I'm, I'm working with, with, with uh, three partners. Uh, the, the one partner I can always show physically that's like Bitbox. Uh, I can show them here. The other one is uh, the Bitcoin way, uh, which mm. I really love. Uh, the Tony was already also two times on the podcast. The other one is a new one. It's a, a Bitcoin watch. So those, those are my three um, sponsors. How I uh, usually go ahead, like first time, first of all, they all 
as far as I know, offer a program where everyone can sign up and they provide you with a link and you can use that link to promote uh, their things and you get a commission of that. There's usually like you have to reach at least that number uh, to get a payout because uh, under that, uh, it's inefficient to do that. That's a fiat thing. Like in Bitcoin, yeah. in Satoshi's, that would not be. But usually it's not that high. Like it's 10 euros or 15 euros per month. So uh, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's not that big of a problem. But yeah, still it, it, is, it is something. Um, so that's the source of income for me because uh, they pay a, a sponsorship uh, retainer every month to be on the po uh, podcast. Uh, then for each sale uh, that actually happens, uh, I get a small commission for that, uh, which is a little bit, uh, which is far less than the actual container of it. Um, not far less, but yeah, it's 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 smaller than that. Um, and that's uh, how the I... The market will adjust that, I, I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Bitcoin products are really sold uh, through the bull market, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe the next six to 12 months, uh, it will change. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because, uh, I, I started in like, um, basically March, April, uh, with, with all the, all the sponsors and everything a little bit in February already. Uh, yeah. but basically I'm active since a few months. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I don't have a lot of data also. Like I, I, I don't know what uh, a big podcaster like what Bitcoin did does. Uh, I assume he has big contracts with his uh, sponsorships that go over years and they are like way more complicated because I don't have contracts. <laughs> like uh, I, don't, yeah. uh, I, I don't have any contracts with my sponsors. Uh, I always like, okay, let's, let's try to work together for three months. We have this agreement. There's like one invoice. It's very simple. I always want to keep it that way so i can drop a sponsor in like less than three months that that that's my thing because what if the sponsor does anything that i'm really disagree with i don't want to be bind to that sponsor for like two years but that's another topic um i think an interesting point here is also that um there is not only sponsors that there is also youtube uh, and YouTube is similar. Uh, they are sharing their revenue with you, but it's not that much. Like they share only a, 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 a small uh, percentage of the revenue with you. I don't know, like, is it 30% or 20%? I, I don't know exactly what it is actually. Uh, I, I only see what, what I get. I don't see what YouTube gets. Um, yeah. But there's also Fountain. And the thing is, my viewership on YouTube is so much bigger than on fountain like on fountain um it's um i don't even know how, how big the viewership is but there is already money coming in from day one and that's a yeah. big difference i think uh what is bitcoin versus fiat because on youtube you have to hit like a certain amount of subscribers then you have to hit a certain amount of watch time uh so it takes a long time to be monetized but the first check that i got was pretty good like which is kind of positive and negative but <laughs> it's, it's like you need a long time to get there and then like oh yeah it's a, it's, it's it's something i cannot live on that uh but i can pay i can pay a little bit food of uh, for for that so um the the overall is like you have youtube ad revenue sharing you have twitter ad revenue sharing you have fountain um, which gives you something. Then you have the uh, po uh, podcast um, uh, sponsorships, where you have a monthly retainer plus the um, the the uh, plus the commissions. So the the commissions is kind of what you already talked about with the split payments. It's yeah. just way more clanky because it's like, oh yeah, we pay you after uh, thirty days, or we pay you. Uh, after uh, a month or we pay you once we hit a certain amount or we pay you after the event happened if it's a if it's an event or something like that so there's always like those weird fiat things and then you have to pay uh, um, uh, create an invoice for that amount and you send them then there's all those tax things going on as i'm very small i don't have to pay a lot of taxes actually uh but uh if, if this whole thing gets bigger, then I probably have to pay a lot of taxes and, and find out a better tax strategy. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all things that uh, I just want to co collect all the information and, and you can go ahead now. Yeah. 
And all of those things that you're describing, those problems are not because of your sponsors. All of those problems is because of the fiat infrastructure. The barrier of $10 is not because they don't want to pay you the commission of 20 cents. The problem is that if they pay you 20 cents, they have to pay $2 to process all those things <laughs> from their side. Uh, obviously, nobody will do that. But that is an infrastructure problem that Bitcoin solves, whether that's on, obviously not on the first layer, but with the Lightning Network currently. And we, when even Lightning Network becomes... Um, uh, a lot of traffic there, you can abstract it on eCash to be even cheaper. And all of those, even if it is one cent commission, you can receive it instantly. And that also uh, uh, completely eliminates this third party trust um, because if third party trust and uh, risk happens, even if they keep the money for a little bit. So, in that period, you're uncertain what will happen to them and if you receive it. But because the instant settlement uh, and it's split, there, there is no accounting on their side. That means it's lowering their cost. Uh, there is no uh, budget, as they said, for you to take a call, just like the codes right now, but even on the user side. Let's talk about on the user side, me, uh, because I'm not a podcaster, but uh, I watch uh, podcasts a lot. I really don't like when uh, you're interrupted in the middle or anything, whether it's on TV or anywhere, with a message that I did not consent to. But if you invite, let's say, a, uh, a hardware wallet manufacturer and you interview them and it's part of the conversation, I would be happy if I'm convinced to buy it and that's how you sell. Now you're not interrupted and the user experience is greater and it will be much faster because you're just scanning one uh, QR code and I directly buy and all the infrastructure happens in the background and the user experience is great. Uh, you are happy because you receive instantly. They are happy because you receive money instantly and you can actually deploy those funds right after that. Because let's say you have something uh, automatic that uh, you receive 10 bucks of one hardware wallet and you deploy those 10 bucks to promote your podcast if you'd like to in any platform and that's automatic uh, growth revenue because you are small and now you can catch up to the big guys that have contracts with sponsors or anything and you the whole infrastructure will create a real open market and an open market means competition for anybody nobody is, is excluded because if you exclude somebody that means that it will centralize more and more because it's not open. But yeah, let's leave it here and I'll add uh, more even after that. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a 5% discount with the code robin at the checkout visit bitbox.swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign, 
individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. It's interesting. Uh, I feel like a social media um, in, in general is quite open to newcomers i mean my my show is i think one attest to that because uh i'm just eight months old in the podcast game like my youtube channel actually like eight months ago had like 200 subscribers and now it's uh across the eight thousand today so when this will be out like will be a little bit more than that um so i feel like if if you actually do a lot of work you can cross uh, way better in already because social media is a kind of a decentralization of TV and those channels. There it was really bad because you, you basically had to sleep your way up to get a show and then do, do like, yeah. we, we all know why, why TV is, is, is wrong. But still, yes, uh, there is a thing, for example, on YouTube, we all know it. The biggest channels are in a small elite group. And this group is actually existing. Like there's a small group on, on YouTube that they have like monthly meetings. They, they have like a special access to, to YouTube. Um, once you hit, for example, 100,000 subscribers, you get a um, key account from YouTube that you can do. Uh, you, you can uh, ex exchange things uh, with. Uh, and for people like Mr. Beast and the really big ones on YouTube, um, they can really closely work together uh, with YouTube, for example, the feature where there's different audio tracks, like there's a Spanish audio track and stuff like that on YouTube. First, only Mr. Beast had it. <laughs> now mm -hmm. a few more have it. I still don't have it because I would love to uh, also have like Spanish audio tracks on my podcast and stuff like that. So there's that. I don't know. It's interesting for me to think about that if that's a fiat thing, because maybe yeah, yeah. it's also just like a company thing because like YouTube would also probably uh, exist on a sound money standard. Maybe it would be something like Nostra. Do you think like that example with the audio track that the feature is first only for the biggest one and then slowly rolling out to small ones? Is that a feared thing? Uh, I would say yes, because of the current, again, thinking infrastructure. And this is, uh, I'm emphasizing, I really love that you brought the, that uh, particular point uh, because obviously you thought about this particular thing, but now think in the Bitcoin e infrastructure that's currently out. That same problem because uh, all the problems that humanity has, what infrastructure people use, it, it really doesn't matter. People want to solve their problems. But if you think in one infrastructure is uh, you will have particular limitations and opportunities and in the other, because if you are this one top guy, uh, that's a benefit for you because all the others are excluded because that even points even more people to you and excluding the competition. But all the people that are fighting to be the best, uh, that's against them. But if it is an open network, that exact same problem. Now, can you do this? Uh, can you think of a way for that same problem, for somebody to solve it, not only to solve it, but for them to pay you? And no is a perfectly fine answer. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, but, but, but go ahead. Uh, okay, now think, I'm not saying this is the solution, but it's an optional solution. Now, what if you reach out a very tiny, small, let's say Spanish podcaster, and you ask him, please translate the audio to my podcasts. Do it uh, as a Bitcoiner. 
And now you create a secondary podcast that you host with them and you do a split payment of his secondary content because you are part of it. Maybe you give him the majority or whatever you decide. But basically, because he is creating additional content on your original content, people, when they zap him, uh, send him uh, sads, you receive a split payment of that payment. And it's basically him paying you and not working for you. That infrastructure is impossible in a lot of uh, fiat things. People need to work for you and obey to your rules because he is not tied to you. It's just an option. If he says, oh, it's not worth it, he drops out and uh, it's uh, a mutual understanding, but you don't need a contract to him because you don't need KYC, you don't need any fiat uh, infrastructure because you're completely on the Bitcoin infrastructure there. But I'm saying if you, we really think about building things through infrastructure and then build those experiences through this because the optionality in the, uh, the Bitcoin uh, system is completely new and we're still thinking through fiat infrastructure to solve it to solve the problems with bitcoin and that's a wrong approach we need to think in the completely new system completely disregarding the fiat thinking and that's i'm saying extremely hard and that's just one example of what i've thought about because the opportunity is there and what you said also on fountain you can start receiving money on the first day but now they integrate it with noster and even the comments you can start receiving from the first day and that's a network effect on your content the audio content and then it's a network effect on the um, uh, comments on your content that you can receive money for. And then they'll add something else and something else. And that's Bitcoin infrastructure that's completely new. And that's why I'm saying build on Bitcoin because those experiences will be impossible on the fiat infrastructure. And that's how we transition into this new life because that opportunity and thing is decentralizing on any point because we don't want only what Bitcoin did to have all the sponsors. We want, uh, it's not good for the Bitcoin ecosystem. It's not good for the podcasters. It's not good for even the, uh, the actual sponsors. In the other infrastructure, uh, the podcasters will receive more money, whether they are small or big. The uh, sponsors will receive more money because more people are promoting them and they will receive instantly. And all of those will flow naturally without any barriers. And that's really the message that I wanted to emphasize because we couldn't talk on the first episode. You completely don't try to solve problems in the fiat infrastructure think completely in the new system. And that is really what Jeff Booth's message is. That is where the abundance is. It's not solving problems. The Bitcoin system is not here to solve the problems that we have. The Bitcoin systems is competing with the fiat system. I have a small uh, adventure that I want to go <laughs> with you outside of the topic, a little bit outside of the topic. Sure. Um, because I I am right now not a lot on Nostra. Um, I'm really focused on like just having my podcast. And uh, I also do that on, on X. On X, I do, don't do a lot. So uh, I, 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 I have some tools where I just put my things in and then they get sent out through all the, all the social media accounts. Um, so because of that, I'm only the, the closest thing that I'm on is a uh, fountain and I connected there and everything. And I even had a, a had a Nick Master on, uh, from fountain from the team. Um, how does, how did fountain now integrate with Nostra? Uh, and do you have any additional, uh, tips for me as a podcaster to be on Nostra? Should, is there any other platform? Is outside of Fountain that I should upload my podcast where people on Nostra like to consume a podcast? Uh, I would say that uh, uh, currently Nostra 
if you're a content creator, you should uh, invest 5% time just like R&D because that is your product. And if you don't invest in R&D, you will miss a lot of opportunity. Nostr is a big opportunity, especially for content creators. How you apply, uh, currently it's a fountain for the podcasters, the most uh, dominant one, but something might change in the future. Uh, the, the very simple thing that you can do is one of the social clients like Primal, Deimos, anywhere, uh, because if you post something there, everybody sees it. Uh, something that I don't have, uh, I wrote a few articles and I received, let's say, uh, 15, 20 bucks uh, for them. And I don't write, <laughs> I write very rarely, but you post every single day. Just take that link of YouTube and post it in uh, in Noster. See what happens. Uh, as I say, I cannot give recommendation because that's not my jam, but invest some portion of the time, just like in the beginning with Bitcoin. Start with 1%, 2%, but I would say 5%. Uh, it's good for any business to invest in uh, R&D. Uh, and R&D... Uh, could be Noster, but I'm including even other stuff that are fiat type of things. So some portion of the time, just invest and you will find what's best suited for you. But that's one of the things that I could recommend. Is there a way to integrate YouTube videos in, in Noster or something like that? That would be really interesting. Uh, yeah, just place the link uh, as a post and uh, you can watch the YouTube video directly in Noster. Oh, nice. I did not knew that actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I'm, I'm not because, an Astra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm just saying I would love uh, to uh, see um, and to see your feedback on that because uh, very few podcasts actually do this, uh, but there are podcasts that are not every day. And I see that the content creators in Noster, they receive a lot of sats. And not only that, but when you receive there, I would also recommend start uh, start also sharing sats there because you receive directly. Start sharing sats and uh, because that type of thing is tracked and people will see what you're promoting also. So you will create a relationship with your own, your own audience and uh, those people that are there are innovators. And uh, maybe... Because you're there, some client will will try to outcompete Fountain and attract you because you're posting every day. I have no idea, but I'm saying start thinking in those completely new experiences through that type of infrastructure and see what happens. Uh, I cannot predict it because nobody has done it before. Like we can predict what happened with YouTube because YouTube now exists for how many years and we all know that you kind of have to ha be an insider or hack the codes, uh, the algorithm. So you can have an advantage. But uh, in Oster, it's still R&D and uh, I'm now in Noster for uh, a year and uh, eight months. And in that year and eight months, from something that was almost impossible to um, uh, to sign in, now it's so easy comparing it in, uh, I cannot imagine what would happen in a year and a half, but in that year and a half, the podcasts that are already there will have a first mover advantage. I also think so. Uh, first mover advantage is amazing. I, and I love Fountain already. Like there is uh, people actually commenting, boosting, streaming. Uh, that's that's an amazing thing uh, that it it's already happening there. And I also like I have um, uh, I have uh, one link where I collect uh, sats. I collected sats like five years ago or something like that. Uh, and now it's it's still active and someone found that and then like gifted me like 50,000 sats through that. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> so like, yeah. it's all, always uh, interesting. It's a really cool feeling also. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I have to be more active in, in, in the Nostra era. Uh, maybe even like Fountain uh, a little bit more uh, active and, and doing more things there, but it's, it's slowly accruing actually. Uh, yeah, just do a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to really focus on it, but 
start playing around with the tools and something will spark an interest and then focus on it because it really inspires you. But right now, just start something. And uh, another thing, let's say you post something and because you use AI uh, with the podcast, what stops you actually to do a resume under the video and see what are the points uh, as a comment and on all of those points you post it in a Noster client and people can comment on the resume of the thing and that attracts just like in YouTube if you comment in the YouTube uh, below this is a silo in Noster everybody can see it and even if a client is created that cannot see the actual YouTube video they can see the resume and they will search for the YouTube video and the discoverability now it's uh, again it's open network on top of an open network on top of an open network and a lot of things are building and uh, even today I watched some of the uh, stream from Nostriga currently it's happening a Noster event in uh, Latvia and just start there uh, maybe uh, see what's happening and uh, you will pick the things where you are going to do but uh, I would recommend the easiest thing is just post the YouTube video there. Even if you don't do anything else, those are sets that people will zap you that you're missing currently. Interesting. Do you think that the whole internet uh, at some point will be will be like that? Like that, maybe not in five years, but maybe 50 years, maybe 100 years, maybe 500 years. Do you think that the whole internet and all the communications through like, things that we now use with Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, and all those things, will they at some point be uh, on an open protocol which is interconnected to each other, like Nostra, uh, with Lightning, Saps, and stuff like that? Uh, I think this is a need that we currently understand uh, we have to have. Whether that's uh, Noster, how it is currently, because Noster, Noster has some limitations when we get the really big scales. Uh, when we get to 500 million users, a billion users, there are limitations in the protocol itself uh, that are beyond my comprehension, but I talk to devs. <laughs> uh, but definitely this is a need and because all of those open network will outcompete the closed networks, it's just right, they are just now starting. Just like uh, Bitcoin, is a teenager, Noster is a toddler. <laughs> so we are just very, very early in that competition. But again, going back to, we have infinite time. There is not a clock of 90 minutes for a football game or anything. We have infinite time. So the better value uh, experience and everything else will outcompete the other. That thing just needs to be realized and because it's open network, I would say even currently, Noster has more developers. This is from the stream uh, today from Nostriga. Noster has more developers today than any other platform. So just because we have the bad experience now, what happens if, uh, when uh, the experience becomes better and we still have more developers than now? the experience will get better and better and better infinitely. And it's for all of our benefit, not for a centralized point benefit that is extracting from us. Nobody is forced on Noster. So if you want to be there, you will be there and you will have benefit. If you're not, as I said, uh, so if it really works, the first movers will have a bigger benefit than the others. But the best thing currently in Noster is just build your social graph there because that's one of the most valuable things. And the experiences are something that needs to be experimented on. What do you mean with social graph? Uh, the social graph is uh, uh, in YouTube is your subscribers. Though that is all the people, the your social network in the YouTube. In Facebook are all your friends. In uh, the Twitter is all your followers. In all of those are social uh, social graphs that people that are following you and that you are connected to. And all of those network are not connected to each other. In Noster, there is one social graph, 
and the people that is commenting on the video will be the same uh, people that you're connected on the uh, direct messages like Signal or the Facebook. Imagine that you can comment on a YouTube and you can see it in Facebook. Uh, the Facebook, you can see it in Twitter. And in Twitter, you can see it in the articles of Bitcoin Magazine or anything else. All of those are connected into the same thing but how you view all of those posts are just different designs and different experiences because that's what Noster gives you that you're connected to everybody in the same place and you don't have to repost on linkedin on youtube on twitter on facebook and everything you post once and everybody that you're connected to sees it be amazing I would love that so much because it's a hustle as a content creator to like, oh yeah, I built up my X. Now I have to build up my YouTube. Now I have to build up my Instagram. Now I have to build <laughs> that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. does it ever end? <laughs> I uh, mean, uh, to a certain extent you can, uh, I, I just saw it like right before we started the, the podcast, Cristiano Ronaldo is now also on YouTube and he has an Instagram account and he broke all the records. Like he, uh, broke the record for getting to a million subscribers. He got into a million subscribers in like, I don't know, 10 minutes uh, yeah. to 2 million subscribers in like 30 minutes. So like really influential people, they, they have the, their social graph and they just have to open an account and then they have the followers also there. Uh, yeah. But that's not the case for everyone. Um, so that's, that's really an interesting uh, uh, use case uh, when we think about um, a social graph, which also is interesting because, for example, if someone uh, writes me on X a DM, hey, do you uh, can I be on your podcast? Uh, then the first thing I see is his profile. And there's one thing that I'm in particular very interested in, how many people that I follow, follow him. Because this is the, the, that's, that's the quickest way to know um, uh, if, he's really int uh, if he's really interesting. I have a lot of guests on that have not been followed by anyone that I follow because like when I see, okay, like 300 people that I follow also follow him, it's pretty safe to say I can have him on the podcast because a lot of people already follow him. So he's probably very interesting also to my audience. If he has no one uh, that uh, I follow that they follow, th that him follow, then I have to do, dig deeper, I have to interact with him, have to write with him and find out uh, if he's a good fit for the podcast or not. Um, but that is a real thing. And now imagine having this social graph everywhere where you can see like, uh, oh, uh, let's check out this restaurant. Oh, my aunt was there and my aunt really liked it. Oh, my friend was there and he really liked it. When you have this social yeah. graph, everywhere that that's uh that's the thing i love the most about the social graph and nostra idea where i'm like what if you can take your whole um uh, social graph your the, your your follower your friends your family whatever into the digital realm and like hey I want to find out what's really cool in Portugal because I'm now uh, uh, making holiday in Portugal. Hey, there's this, uh, I don't know, um, ice cream shop. Uh, three of my friends were there and they all really loved it. So let's check the ice cream shop out. So that's one thing that I, for example, love a lot when we have that <laughs> because it, it exists already with Google and with all this isolated things. But what if this all is connected and connected, centralized, connected, but nobody has to control over it. That's that's the, the yep. real thing because like it, it looks like yeah. If what if Google controls everything, then it would also be there, but that would not be a beautiful world because then Google has a lot of power that we don't want. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why I say, uh, for me, any content creator should be on Noster just to play around with the thing because you know the problems in the fiat infrastructure much, much, much better than me. I'm not a content creator, but uh, right now it's used as content creation and there are uh, clients that are our interfaces of Noster that uh, can be created for a very particular type of use case that let's say uh, you make a deal when your podcast becomes big and 
you want to create a newsletter of your podcast and you want to create a client that seeks out every time that somebody mentions you or your podcast and to create and filter all of the other things out. And all of that is optional that you can create anything you want. You Even if somebody blocks you, they don't really block your data. They block you if you are uh, visible, let's say, on Primo or Demos or anywhere else. They can block you through one interface. Let's say right now, if YouTube blocks you, you cannot go anywhere else almost. But if anything blocks you in Noster, they don't really block you. They just... Uh, block themselves of benefiting from your content because your content is out there and anybody can see it, <laughs> but they are blocking themselves from benefiting from you. And that's uh, uh, aligned incentives. And uh, again, it's a lot of potential still. Uh, uh, there are a lot of clinkiness and stuff like that. But as I said, in a year and a half, the experience that I have uh, completely changed and they are putting AI stuff. They're uh, putting so many specialized things. Uh, even uh, if you want to chat and uh, talk uh, audio call, uh, voice over IP, they are creating those particular clients in Noster. So the idea is that potentially Noster will be the new internet. The internet that has native money, that is again, this open uh, Bitcoin infrastructure, and it's such a beautiful world on the other side, but it is so incredibly hard to not think in fiat terms uh, and solve the problems that we currently have. Just completely shift and think in the new system. That's where, again, hashtag Jeff Booth, that is where abundance is. Uh, but uh, unless you actually start doing it and you're still... Uh, knee deep into your current problems, uh, that's not the way that you're going to benefit a lot. I'm not saying the problems uh, are irrelevant, but I'm saying if you want to outcompete everybody else, you need to switch your thinking. Think differently. Interesting. I just pulled it up uh, because I have a I have a Nostra. Uh, maybe I, how can I? Is it, is it possible? Yeah. Do you see it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still my my old like I started it like a year ago or something like that, and I saw my last post really cool, and it's like over hundred sats. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love uh, it. Post. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to and, be more active on there, uh, yeah. but uh, I will I will probably like start today with exchanging the profile picture and the banner picture with a new one. <laughs> Is Demos the best uh, one? What do you use? Does Primal Demos? Uh -huh. Uh, it's so much switching. Uh, for example, over this year and a half, I started with uh, uh, Snort was okay, but then it was outcompeted by Primo. Right now, I really love what Yakihon is uh, doing. Uh, it's still a lot of things has benefit in one thing and the other, but uh, I am subscribed not subscribed, but I uh, see Noster through uh, six different uh, clients. Uh, and everybody has a different interface and different options and different things. And uh, I'm just trying, again, to keep up with what's happening there. And I post here and there. And I comment on some stuff. And don't focus a lot of the time, uh, again, but some partial uh, time uh, to be there it's really beneficial and uh, uh, like you said imagine that you are in that social graph before Ronaldo and when Ronaldo comes in you're one of the first that comments on his and you can benefit from that network effect coming into you and what happens if Ronaldo is already there and you follow him uh, it's not going to have that beneficial of social graph. And the most beautiful thing is that when you build your social graph, you cannot go down unless you're a crappy content creator. <laughs> but in the fiat infrastructure, you can go down. You can bl be blocked. You can be shadow banned. You can be anything. 
in Noster, you can just build on top of everything that you already have. Yeah, really interesting. Um, let's make now one one more uh, thought experiment. You said before that Bitcoin is in the teenage years and Nostra is a toddler. Yeah. How does the world look like when this is not the case anymore? When Bitcoin is already an adult and Nostra is an adult, uh, maybe let's say 30 years from now, uh, Nostra will be over 30 years, Bitcoin will be over 40 years. Um, what, what kind of world is that? How, how, how do you see the, the impacts of, of that? Uh, I would say something that is, will be absolutely true. A lot of things will be unknown, but those two things are open networks, as we uh, said. And open networks, what it means is that it is open market, which again means that it is it is a global competition. So for the people that don't want to compete, that play dirty will be bad because uh, they are not used to this. But for real true competitors, it will be awesome because uh, me as a ex sportsman, I love to compete against people that are better than me because I want to beat them because I want to be better than me. And that's the premise of any sport or any competition. And that's the real true market that Bitcoin is playing the, this infinite game. And it is a competition out of all the currencies. It's not that Bitcoin does not have limitations. Yes, it has limitation, but we are competing and the better person will win the better system will win and that is the thing that will be on this other side after 30 40 years that because it is competing we will see the winner the winner from my point of view it's already set but the other system has thousands or if not thousands hundreds of years advance <laughs> Uh, against this new system but because of all the problems and because they disincentivize competition that is why they will win the fiat infrastructure will lose because it is not a free market because it is not a competition there are barriers there are blocks there are bans there are uh, forces that are against this free market and the other free market because it's truly free the best person will win the best user experience will win uh, because of those experiences we all want to have those experiences just like we talked about the split payment yeah the split payment it's not when you talk about it oh you receive a commission if you think through the current uh, thinking big deal but if you really think about the implications of what allows freedom and all of those competing forces, how they are going to outcompete the people that do not implement that split payment, now that experience will outcompete the other and the world becomes better. Uh, and that's infinitely for the future. What again, hashtag Jeff Booth happens because the best experience, the best value providing to humanity will win. That is why we will uh, have money that uh, uh, everything bought through Bitcoin will be will become cheaper and cheaper. Obviously, people want that and the other becomes more expensive and more expensive. If you say it like that, uh, obviously, what would win with infinite time? But in the current state, uh, it's just a lot of misinformation. A lot of people just need to learn. A lot of people need to detoxicate in it. But because uh, nobody can stop you from joining Noster, nobody can stop you from building on Bitcoin, you will provide that extra experience that will give you value because you're giving value to the world. And that is where we will be in 30, 40 years, that people voluntarily will become uh, competitors in anything that they do. And because they are competitors, that means that we will enjoy the best of humanity. And currently, we are not. The, I love that, with the competition, uh, the, the, the proof of work aspect also really interesting. When yeah. you, 
When you think at the current state of Bitcoin right now, when we have uh, a lot of ETFs, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> hold their Bitcoin on exchanges, on ETFs, on, on centralized uh, things, only a small amount of people actually have a solid multi-signature self-custody solution or whatever they, they, they should have or like a self-custody solution in, in general. Um, what do you... Do, do you think there is a chance that even Bitcoin gets captured by the, the centralized uh, authorities, not in a sense where Bitcoin gets manipulated, but in a sense where people are getting used to this convenient way of using Bitcoin? Because, yeah, of course, it's more convenient to use Bitcoin uh, in, in, in exchange because, yeah, it's just numbers on a screen like it's the common way that you, you log in with your password. Uh, it's, it's, it's your use to that. Uh, if you have to educate yourself, what's a hardware wallet, how, how signing going to do, what, what do I have to do? Oh, I have to run a node also for privacy and all those things. Like, um, do, do you think that Bitcoin might be uh, revolutionizing uh, the store of value aspect but but not more of that because it gets captured by those centralized uh, things. Do, do you think this is a possibility? I would say because uh, with Breeze and we're building on the second layer and uh, we're really focusing on the medium of exchange uh, um, part of Bitcoin, that's uh, real moneyness <laughs> uh, of it. I would say uh, it will be extremely hard. Uh, I would say the best of humanity currently has the tools and the power to do something about like we talked the one percent has enormous power and the 99 percent are obeying because they cannot fight against it but now the majority and even one person think about this one person most likely satoshi nakamoto gave this to the world and it is outcompeting everything else. And it's not needed that Bitcoin needs to be realized by the majority. It's needed for that one builder to give this to the world. And if we have the fiat uh, mentality currently that wants to capture Bitcoin and to become from petro, petro dollar to the Bitcoin dollar thing. Yes, they can do that. But in Bitcoin, even if they rob the majority of people and let's say they rob uh, and they have 4 million, 5 million, 10 million of Bitcoin, I, I, I don't care. Even those numbers are, I think, impossible uh, because on that other side that they can rob the humanity once in the Bitcoin system. That pain, that suffering from the people will be such a lesson, just like FTX was the best day when people started buying hardware wallets. Yes, they will capture it, but from that pain, because there is no bailout, now the majority of people, uh, after they are robbed, they will say, I don't want your dollars, pay me in Bitcoin or I'm not going to opt back in, even if they are captured currently. And that is the best feature that in the Bitcoin system, the people that w have to lose, actually lose. And in the fiat system, the people that should not win are winning because they are not allowed to go bankrupt. I love that uh, the deadline, really, really cool. Um, as you also said, you're, you're, you're from Greece. Um I, I want to go only a little bit and quick in there. Um, do you think that uh, we covered it a little bit on the topic? We also covered it a little bit uh, in the previous episode uh, with you. Do you think that everything will be also built on Lightning? Is is Lightning kind of the the layer that already has has won the the, the share, or is there like room for other layer tools? Or how do you see the the future scaling for all that building on top of Bitcoin? Uh, uh, as we talked, I still hold this uh, value that Lightning is again a competition out of all the other layer tools. And Lightning, because it really preserves the trustlessness uh, a lot on the second layer, uh, 
like the Bitcoin blockchain, because that's the fundamental thing that uh, on the first layer we have incorruptibility and on the second layer we need to preserve it maximum uh this uh, feature and lightning is that solution uh, right now and like we talked on noster the network effect on lightning uh right now it's not going to be surpassed maybe there is a very thin edge case of you need to solve something for another uh, for that particular edge case and you create uh, another layer two but it's not going to be the main component of layer twos because um even uh, our ceo roy wrote this article that lightning even now is the common language that we all speak in bitcoin payment terms that even ecash let's say uh, the privacy will be solved with eCash, but eCash will be on t not on top of, but will be integrated with the Lightning Network. So uh, if I'm in one federation or uh, I'm in one eCash uh, Mint and you're in another, to send you that eCash, uh, it will go through the Lightning Network. If uh, we're using Liquid, uh, we even now created uh, Liquid SDK on our end on infrastructure, and that is also using Lightning. So all of those other open networks will be connected through this common language of the Lightning Network. And the metaphor that he used in the article is really, uh, I speak uh, Bulgarian language, you speak German, but we are communicating in English. And that is the Lightning Network. That's, uh, yeah, we might have different networks and different uh, properties in uh, uh, those cases, but the common thing that everybody will use and it's functional, operational and everything now is the Lightning Network. Even if we have other things, it will be small niches to solve a particular use case of a, a very particular group. Absolutely. Uh, that's. I think that's a great insight in the Lightning Network. I also feel like when, when we talk about scaling solutions, you, you can't really go without the Lightning Network. At this point, it would be hard for me to understand uh, see the Lightning Network not being the dominant layer too, but it's 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 interesting for me. For me, it's always like okay, Bitcoin is 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 the base layer. Layer two, I still have to educate myself more on top of that, even though I have done a lot of guests already <laughs> and, and some research. But yeah, uh, you don't need to be educated. You just need to use it. Like uh, don't we should get out of this uh, theoretical type of things. And just like I told you, I, I, I will not tell you, go research Noster. I'm telling you, go do stuff, go apply things. And uh, just like that, use the Lightning Network and see what are the limitations, the benefits and everything else and use it for your best uh, user experience that you want to have and the problems that you want to solve. We should get out of the podcast uh, diction that uh, all we need to talk about it. No, go do stuff. Proof of work. Uh, that's uh, that's very true. Uh, just, that's just trying it out. Perfect. Then um, the last question uh, is always the same question for every guest. Um, before, the, before the end routine, there's a new question actually. Um, yeah. So the question always for the same guest is what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about on the podcast uh to learn from me uh anything or like yeah like uh i i want to to get something that we didn't heard already so like what can we learn from you uh whatever it is besides all the things like all besides bitcoin besides lightning besides all those things uh i would say uh I talked about it in a few other podcasts, but we definitely didn't speak uh, about it with you, is that if you don't start uh, with writing a list with your life goals, that let's say I want a house, I want a car, I want vacations, I, I, it does not matter. But if you don't start there, even if you're a Bitcoiner, you're not going to have the life that you want. You should start with the list and the goals that you have for your life and you use this Bitcoin thing that will get you there faster than anything else. And when you have that list, you will know when 
to spend your Bitcoin because you thought about what your life should be. You should not be the richest man in the grave with the Bitcoin and everything that everybody promotes, hold on till you die and then after that, so uh, the other people will benefit from you dying. That's the wrong thing. You should chase and achieve the life that you want to have. But if you never actually set those goals, you're never never going to get there, even if you have a Bitcoin. Love that a lot. You have to write it down. Yeah. Really cool. Um, now the end routine of the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Your question from the previous guest is, do you think there is any risk for Bitcoin not to become mainstream? And what can we Bitcoiners do to make sure Bitcoin actually becomes mainstream? I would say... Uh, in the long term, there is no risk because, as we said, even the bad outcomes, because there is no bailouts in uh, Bitcoin, even if people die, uh, the, like in Lebanon through fiat infrastructures or whatever people are stolen from uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem, like uh, that is life that uh, people die accidents happens but you are allowed to that is entropy and that is part of life because if you want to have the new you have to get uh, rid of the things that are not secure uh and i i am not worried about uh, if we are going to have hyper bitcoinization i'm worried if people are uh, going to get tricked by not knowing what they're doing uh so uh either it takes a long time uh, through uh, they really capture us by 2% inflation and they create this infrastructure of the Bitcoin dollar slowly because if they create it fast and let's say they uh, start buying Bitcoin today and Bitcoin shoots to 1 million in a few months, a lot of people will wake up and start searching the results. I think they, in order to capture us, they have to do it slowly uh, so they can be get bought. But even then, they will get wrecked at some point and people will learn the most harsh way. So I'm not worried about that. And I'm not worried because in order to not even get there, just build. That is the proof of work. Stop waiting for Bitcoin to become a million. And again, start with the list of your life goals and start putting it on top of the Bitcoin infrastructure. Stop thinking in fiat terms. Start thinking in a Bitcoin mindset. I love it a lot. Really yes. cool. Uh, thank you so much, uh, even for being on already. Um, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? Uh, I am uh, on Noster, as we talked. Uh, uh, I liked a lot, uh, but I'm not a, a social media guy or anything. But on Noster and on uh, X or the previous Twitter thing. So... Anywhere else, uh, you can reach out in Breeze. If you have a problem uh, with uh, the Breeze uh, account or anything, I'm the support guy from the team. So uh, I'm helping those issues. But uh, if you are a Bitcoiner, you're always welcome. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, even also for every, uh, thank you everyone for watching and listening. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.